Well, welcome to another Century 21 Affiliated Market Update here with Dan and Bill. I'm Dan Cruz, President and CEO of Century 21 Affiliated, joined here with our founder, Bill Kessler. Bill, how you doing, bud? Great. Good. Well, uh, this is our first market update of 2015, so we just want to give a little quick recap and then we'll spend a little time talking about what the future holds for the, for the real estate market here. Uh, first of all, we just want to send out a congratulations to all of the Century 21 Affiliated agents throughout the system for a spectacular outstanding awesome 2014 uh, we unbelievable. Just, unbelievable we just got back from Washington DC where we had the global conference uh, it was a fantastic uh, uh, three days of education uh, information networking uh, but but most importantly our agents the agents of Century 21 affiliated got recognized as being the number one Century 21 in the world in 2014 uh, with over 11,500 closed transactions over this last year. So it was just a great year and we wanted to say congratulations and thanks for the hard work. And a special shout out to Mary Schultz, who this year was elected by her peers to the Century 21 Hall of Fame for agents. And this is an honor that was only bestowed on two agents in the entire world, out of 101,000 agents. And that we're incredibly proud of her and it is really special. Yeah, it was, a, it was a fantastic evening there in DC when she got awarded and went on stage and she just, we're very proud of you Mary and congratulations for all the years of, of hard work and success out there. Right. Uh, so let's also talk a little bit about the marketplace. Uh, spring this year, or I should say uh, the end of winter this year, has been interesting. Uh, January, February, and now into March certainly has been cold throughout all of our marketplaces. Uh, and the market has kind of been up and down, uh, maybe uh, normal, not so normal on certain sides. But, you know, Bill, what have you seen so far? And then we'll talk a little bit about what we think the next couple months look like. First of all, Dan and Bill are the same people as last year. <laughs> Dan has glasses and I have hair. How that happened, I have no idea. We're really not that different. Right? <laughs> same personalities, same people. And a cold winter did really make a difference. It did. Uh, I was lucky enough to spend some of it in Mexico, so I didn't have the uh, pangs that our buyers and sellers and agents had here. Uh, the marketplace in general was off about two, three percent January this year versus last year. But the good news was because of our expansion and uh, agents and everything, we, we actually were up 16%, which is remarkable, I think. It was fantastic. The, uh, the, the market in general, it, every office, almost every office that we talk to says the same thing, which is, uh, wow, a lot of offers, the buyers are out there. We talk to uh, people who man the internet leads, they say it's uh, the busiest they've ever been in the four years we've been doing this. Uh, so the, the interest, uh, uh, the desire, and the demand is there. Uh, we already know that the problem we've talked about for the last two years is going to exist in spades this year, which is the lack of inventory and middle-priced affordable housing. You know, the, the inexpensive beat-up ones are there, the luxury mansions are there, the independent ones still have the difficult chance because new home construction is not picked up because of uh, financing rules and regulations, auditors, etc. And uh, many home sellers out there still are not convinced that they are above water, that what they paid for the home in 2000, 2005, 2006 is less than what it's worth now. Mm -hmm. And one of our jobs as, as professionals is to help them understand, hey, you have more equity than you think, and now is the time to be a move up. And some of our agents have really uh, worked their sphere. I've talked to several that said, yes, this is the year of the move up buyer, finally. We've not had a move up buyer for almost a decade, and uh, it's starting to happen. And if, if, if it gets momentum, and that's up to you and up to us to do that, uh, we're gonna have incredible, spectacular 2015. Well, the, the two things I'll add on to that is, one, you're absolutely right, we're seeing buyer activity out there. Buyers want to purchase, rates are still low, uh, there's a lot of activity, but we still see that lack of listing inventory, and, and one of the things we've talked about the last couple of years is the shrinking inventory of REO listings out there, and that certainly is true right now in 2015, so we do have to tell the story, we have to go out there and tell the general public, hey, it's now's a great time to list, there's high demand, the inventory's not out there, uh, let's get your home on the market because it's gonna it's gonna relate to good things happening in the spring. So I think one of the biggest challenges we throw out there, and if, if we all kind of uh, uh, join this and, and move forward with it, is if we get more listing inventory right now in the months of, of March and April, it's gonna mean a really good May, a really good June, a really good July. Um, one caveat to all this is that uh, in every market, whether it's a political thing or an economic thing, 
there's always what are called red herrings. Red herring is like a, an idiom for uh, fears that really don't have anything to do with, with the central premise. And this year's uh, red herring, if you will, is uh, the third party companies, uh, Zillow, Trulia, Realtor, what's happening with them. Sure. And uh, you get a lot of noise about that. The reality is it really doesn't matter. Uh, they're all going to figure out how to get our listings on them. We're all going to get our leads in the, in the same way and hopefully competition will be even better. So I, I would suggest to our agents, to everybody, just ignore that stuff and go work with the buyers and sellers. Yeah, and the internet activity that's out there will continue to progress. People are going to be searching online and then, quite frankly, it doesn't matter if they're searching Realtor.com, Century21.com or our website, buyers are getting out there. And we'll get in touch with them, we'll connect with them and we'll route those leads. So I think you're, you make a good point. Don't get caught up in that mess. We certainly will attack those uh, those leads as they come through. I wouldn't get overly concerned about it. The, uh, uh, today we got another excellent job report. Uh, mm -hmm. The national unemployment rate is down to 5.5, which is the lowest it's been since 2008 when the recession started. Yep. Uh, and that means there's, there's, there's confidence in the economy. The uh, Standard Poor Index, uh, the Dow Jones Index, are all-time highs. So there's confidence in American companies, the American work ethic, and that means people will be buying homes. Yep. And one of the ways it's translating is that uh, one of the fears was that this generation, uh, would, the millennium generation, would not be as into buying homes as were their, their parents, their grandparents, their older brothers and sisters. Well, we're finding out that they are. And now it's just a late discovery because it took them a while to have solid jobs and, and careers. So that is what is causing this boom right now and it's causing the ability for people to actually be moving buyers again as soon as they choose to do so. Well, it's interesting. We said, uh, we talked about this, uh, even you and I, a couple years ago, that that trend was going to happen. It was just a matter of timing. Well, that timing is now, right. and really all signs point to some good market trends ahead. So I know we went long today, but uh, it was the first recap that we've been able to do since the beginning of 2015. So thank you guys all for watching. Uh, pay attention for many more of these to come, and uh, have a great one. Uh, Bill, uh, we'll see you later. Yep. Thanks for being here.